Okay, now we're going to look at the sacred geometry and secrets of the bent pyramid. A lot of people know about this, and this is from the reign of a king coming into the 4th dynasty, which I just did a recent video series about and would love to you to look at of the pyramid builders itself. But this is from Senefru and just coming into it in the time where we know that he built three pyramids, the Pyramid of Maidum, which is really a triple-step pyramid, almost like a ziggurat. And then this, which seems to be a conglomerate, and everybody says is a mistake. And then he built the Red Pyramid at Dashur. In fact, that's where this is also in his funerary complex. In this picture right here, you can see there's a line of stones that are right below him, and I believe that there is a shrine that's right near here. Perhaps we're looking at it right now. I don't know which corner we're looking at. That can be shown on Google Earth even, and satellite photos, that there's something there that they don't have shown to the public, and there's a lot of ripples in the ground and some squared off shapes. probably another boat associated with this and so on too but here it starts its opening telling you that Egypt's most iconic temple is a mirror of the planet as well as human DNA well if you've seen my other videos done about sacred geometry or other people showing you this idea quite often they don't talk about the full scope of what is actually entrapped in sacred geometry and in the mathematics that makes up the Great Pyramid. But I've shown you quite a few things and how it actually does mirror the planet, the size of the Earth, the difference between the bulge of, of its middle versus its vertical shape of itself, and it's that oblate spheroid, that they were within not too many miles of being exactly right on in fact our current with the bulge that we have from the uh, moon pulling on the ocean it can actually be within that threshold of numbers more than that the Great Pyramid shows with its circumference if you take two sides of it, ID like this, if you pretend it's the Great Pyramid, and do the left side and the right, not the other back two angles you're not looking at, and you folded it out straight, that ends up being an arc second of angle. Basically, through the day, if the sun was straight up above you and you had a pole over you and the sun was coming by, during that moment, that it passed by that there was no shadow at the pole there it would be flying past here or we actually were spinning as opposed to it and it covers that same arc second it's odd it's a declamation of a small amount of what we use for longitude and latitude to this day but it's one of the smallest amounts and usually something that's only used by astronomers and things like that of a high age but we're finding they had knowledge of that and a lot of other things shown in these pyramids. And so as we learn more and more and we go through it in time, things have slowly like an onion unraveled and showed us that there's a lot more going on than we're usually told or taught about and even though this has been found out, still it's shunned to be talked about as some kind of pseudoscience. So let's get into this. The Bent Pyramid is located at the Royal Necropolis of Dashur. It's the most enigmatic of approximately 90 pyramids to be found in Egypt, a unique example of early pyramid development at 2596 B.C., it is also unique in that its original polished limestone outer casing remains largely intact. And you can see it on it here in the Great Pyramid. It's really just the top of it and it makes it look like it's a snow-capped mountain. 
But on here, you can tell that they were able to work once they got up to the top part here a lot easier because of it being flatter of an angle. And they pried them off and just would let them tumble down to the bottom. And what I understand, a lot of the rubble that's around this is refuge from them having done so. And the only reason that we have this amount left is that someone stopped them from doing so. And that up until a modern time, there really wasn't a town very close to this. To be able to steal it off of there like what had happened with Cairo. The lower part of the pyramid rises from the desert at an inclination of 54 degrees by 44 feet, but the top section is built at the shallower angle of 43 degrees by 22 feet lending the pyramid its very obvious bent appearance as people call it unorthodox archaeologists postulate that due to the steepness of the original angle and the inclination of the structure may have begun to show signs of instability during construction therefore halfway up forcing the builders to adopt a shallower angle to avert the structure's collapse perhaps you've heard of this in essence, what the people are suggesting is that this beautiful edifice was a mistake, and even if their theory is unproven, they still seem to say this to this day. Perhaps you've heard it. Well, given the track record of Egyptian monuments, errors were not actually part of the temple builder's vocabulary, it seems. In fact, a precision. Throughout this ancient land of Al-Kim, it's where alchemy comes from, or Kemet. Vast temple complexes were designed and encoded with advanced mathematics, some of which we're only finding out today. Sacred geometry, astrological and astronomical alignments, mirror imaging of entire constellations, and the list goes on. Errors simply did not factor into such a precise building or observation of these people. You can tell that whenever they wanted to, they would be extremely precise. And with all these temples and the care that they had in it, that they wouldn't have had too many errors, if any at all, that people would notice. Another proper theory expounded by Orthodox Egyptologists concerns the initial slope angle. The construction somehow would simply take too long and Senefru's death was nearing. Although they built a whole pyramid after this. And the builders changed the angle to compete, complete the construction in time before his passing. However, neither the bent pyramid nor any other major pyramid has produced burial remains or signs of having been designed for funeral purposes. Well, that's not necessarily true. The way that this comes down is from Mastabas in the first place, like the Sumerians had. And so when we look at that one that's the original step pyramid, it's actually built out of a Mastaba and then built upon. So they got something to another level. And once they did, they started building these edifices and, and they were symbols and everybody took them as to be tombs. Give you a thought that I've had for a long time and since I was a kid and trying to compare things and Jesus and all that type of stuff was that they tell you that there's never been anybody found there but then there are sarcophagus type things that are there but they're empty imagine that whenever they found Jesus tomb empty this was supposed to have been the sign that he had gone whether somebody snuck in and took the body away and then oh man you wouldn't believe it there was just an angel here and he flew off in heaven yeah that still might leave you doubting in fact they to alleviate that they gave you doubting Thomas his brother actually and uh, he had to even poke the wound and everything to believe that was him
But in this one, in the idea, I think the concept was supposed to be that once we finally did make it into the pyramid, that the, these people had gotten it figured out to a point that apparently he, he did go. Like his tomb is just as empty as Jesus, and where'd he go? Well, he went. Because you're not supposed to look for him. Kind of like the Valley of the Kings and stuff, because they got tired of it. Even in pre-dynastic times coming through, people started mucking and stealing things out of it. So they even built booby traps and stuff like that, wrote curses and all this things. And hexes. And we'll talk about hexes here in a minute. But one of the purposes for this was to show you the fact that they had it figured out once we finally got into it. And I believe in a strange way, only one part of the, the whole concept of this was, one piece of it was the idea that if it all went to crap again, like the idea of Atlantis and that everybody thought they were bouncing back out of here coming from 10,000 BC in the last ice age, if it went through this again, Hopefully this thing would be a beacon for people, and once they checked it out, they'd start measuring and doing things. And if they could find the common measurement of the cubit and get that concept down, once they got to the point of being able to measure the planet again, which they had already done previous to this point, it's before Eratosthenes, and the Sumerians knew about it too, and so on. Yeah, we're told that later everybody thought the world was flat, had no idea, and they thought we were going to fall off the edge. Just... But if people were to get to the level one day and figure it all out, and then having to study this beacon here of humanity that's right in the heart of the center of the continent, we all supposedly come out of, and the hinge point of it doing so out and in, and in and out and in. That you'd be able to make the connections. And by making the connections. You would realize that there were a people. That knew a whole bunch. Way back when. A sign. A beacon. A symbol. It's like hey. Screaming at you all the way until the moment. That you figured it out. Strangely, in the modern day, we're still not taught things. In school, we're not taught things. My children are still not taught things. As I grew up and I started to mature, coming out of junior high and going into high school, I started developing a box that I had to take puzzle pieces in that were supposed to be the puzzle pieces that went with the one they were telling me about. But because there's an anomaly here that doesn't go with what you're talking about, I'm going to throw it in this box here. But I'm not going to throw it away like you keep telling me. And after a while, one day, I was like, what the hell was in that box? Oh, wow. Some of these pieces were magically stuck together now and started making connections. In fact, that puzzle started making a little more sense over a long time than the other one. And then I got into out of high school and get into college and then all oh, everything changed. They were going to start telling you about some of this stuff. But the funny thing is the entire puzzle they left out. You know, Sumer is supposed to have been where they started agriculture and they finally put some things together and so on. And now you're finding out that they, well, first of all, our clock still built on in 12 hours a day and 24 hours a day and this is 12 hours or Horus of the day the Egyptians got that from them and so on but it goes back from before that and all these people had sacred geometry right when they show up they seem to show up like popcorn in a lot of my videos I show you that that's not necessarily so and we're trying to track that point back to the Natufian culture and so on all the way back to Gobekli Tepe and that's just the oldest empire that we know of today, and that's what that's showing to be. Testa Pelier is showing to be an empire that was going on at the end of the last ice age that got destroyed because of that happening, and it took a while for us to bounce back. Much like the Atlantis story, but some of the parts don't fit. 
others do. Got a video about the Edfu text and how that might just show you that eh, it was a conflagration of two things trying to put two and two together. And that the Atlantean tale is really something that by the time the Greeks were telling the tale, they had already surpassed what those people had done before. And so much like Sitchin and other people, they want to give it some current type instead of some outlandish thing, you know, that would be the people they're trying to talk about, that they had really pretty much surpassed that. And in that effect, this was really a warning to themselves on the idea of like, hey, it sounds familiar, doesn't it? But they tell you that uh, in the great, in the case of the Great Pyramid of Giza, the entrance leading into the alleged burial chamber is too narrow to accommodate the sarcophagus that's even in it. So they must have popped it in there before, in fact, put the granite that's in there and so on. Needless to say, the theory of the pyramids' as tomb is as absurd as the story that the builders simply wish to hurry a job along. Even anyone today building a house will tell you that the builders never rush a job. Let's take another look at those enigmatic slopes and see if there was a purpose behind the design here and get on to this. For all of these seem to have some connections to them. And it all has to do with astrotheology. So here's the early plan of the Bent Pyramid, and I, it, it, to me it doesn't look as bent as it really is in this shot. But of course with shadows on there, it really shows, and you can see it definitely in here. And how this pyramid looks laid back. Well, if you can tell, it because of that, it gets this little hump right at that corner of the conjuncture of the two meetings. I.e., if they ever did think that whenever they got to this flattening point where they started changing the angel angle because of all the bad things happening, that they should have done so, if they would take off a few layers off of right here on the edges of the outsides of it, this top part here, they could have built a whole lot easier and already had a lot of the stone already made but also fix the thing to where it's all the way down to the ground in the shape of the top pyramid. Or fixed it in any way they wanted to by just moving some of the stones that are making the angles up and refixing it. So there's a lot of ways that they could have gone about doing so, but they didn't. Here in this picture, and it's a little small, but you can see somebody's caught the line where it declamates in the difference of angle and showing you the difference here and because of the bottom and putting the point of where that is of the golden section here on the top if we mirrored that around on the bottom now if you think about it you could start making that sacred flower of life and geometry around using these points here and as you did you'd find out that every single one of these would show up to be a correct point and even though this comes above a top, we also have the temple and the shaft below, as above, so below. Right? If you think about it, utilizing this point where I'm at right now, if we took the top part of the pyramid that's at the different shape and we flipped it over and made as above, so below out of it, that would be this point right here. But it has other connections, too. But a lot of people believe that up inside this thing up here, they have a whole other chamber and hall of records, if you want, or something that is definitely there, because why would you build the thing with only that being the insides of it? Even the Great Pyramid of Giza seems to be showing some extra in into it. And if you wanted to take some weight out of it, all you've really done... If you take the angles here of where it was going and where it would be where it is now, you're really only going up to about this point here. And you're only taking 40 or 50 foot off the top of it. I forget what somebody exactly figured out of it. 
but it's not that much. But that amount of stone could easily be relieved out of it if you just made a hall or open spots inside of here like they're in the Great Pyramid and could be big ones inside of here and still done this way. Figuring out an easy way to do that. Now there's 101 ways to skin a cat. People keep telling you there's only one. And they keep telling you that you got to hold them by the tail. Or you want to grab them by the scruff. Yeah, you want to hold them by the scruff in the back of their neck. Somebody else came up with the idea, I guess it was the Egyptians or perhaps before this time, that said that if you knock the cat out, then you really can do it any way you want to. So before they even had this going on, they had already knocked the cat out. This was not a mistake. Let's go back up here one more second and let me ask you a simple question. Because it's sealed to the top here and you can tell the pictures before and now that they stole more stone off of it in the in-betweens here, if they had figured out that they had done it wrong, why would they continue to so much of an nth degree here to get to the point? And then if it's not right, why would they t take the time and the effort to finish it off so nicely? If they were running with time of death of the Pharaoh dying here, then why would they be able to build a pyramid that's just as big, if not a little bigger, the Red Pyramid after this point? And that's totally cool, but they had to rush here. You see, some of this just falls apart in concepts like that. But let's look at this shape here and try to get a little bit more part of it here. The ancient formal name of the Bent Pyramid is generally translated as the Southern Shining Pyramid. And in terms of mystery, it certainly shines. In fact, it would have had that shining surface on the edge of it. They talked about being somewhat polished and reflecting back the sun like the Great Pyramids used to. In ancient times, names and myths were generally metaphoric by nature and concealed several layers of meanings. In Egypt, shining also is a reference to the creator gods, those shining ones. The Els are shining ones. El is like the god of the Levant. El. He's the reason for the Bible, the Tower of Bab El. Ange El, and all the angels are named with L in their name, all that's showing you that the patriarchs before they started going with the Yahweh name and started saying it was no longer to be named and changed it to some initials, that's who it was. L and his son Baal, one of which is a storm god, and there we go with that sky storm god concept and his son, sounding like Jesus somewhat. <coughs> but we also have this thing that he used of lightning which we call um um el electricity yeah the elders knew this the uh, elite still do to this day we elect some people into this situation but they're mostly the elders but sometimes these things can be as big as an el offent or the tower of babel and you won't even see it I say, do you see the tree? And you're like, I can't see it for the forest. And just... If we follow this line of reasoning, then the structure is some way involved with the creation, form, and manifestation, or all three. And there we go with that triad and triple that we've talked about so many times. The ancient Egyptians knew how the universe worked somewhat. The ratios of the dimensions of Earth as well as the dissection of planetary geometries is hidden in the temples and they are erected. In a way, the temples are mirrors of the perfection of the Earth and the solar system and what caused life here. Hence why their designs are pleasing to the eye. They are perfect just as the solar system is built in a precise relationship between geometry and its numerical mirror, mathematics, language of the gods, if you will, and the bent pyramids no exception. How the ge geometries of the bent pyramid are calculated, though. See, the cosine of the upper slope angle of the tangent of 36 degrees that you would use in normal 
Here is a pentagonal angle of 43 degrees by 22 feet and the cosine of the lower slope angle is a tangent of 30 degrees, which is a hexagonal angle at 54 degrees, or 540, which we've shown how that keeps going. And all these sacred geometries here all add up to 9 with their numbers. Even if you use geometria and so on, it just, no matter what, folds in on it. So you compare that with the measured slope angles here, and they're the same, basically 43 by 22 and 54 by 27, a slight difference that's off in the second one, but that's just by the foots of declamation. I could go off on people talking about that, but let's look at this, maybe a little more important and a little more straightforward on some of this concept here. So the original pyramid was coming up, and it was based off of a hex. Now, this hex is built off of a square. And you can circle the square or square the circle, inside or outside, or using the points on it. Many people know what I'm talking about. Hopefully you're following me. But if you look at this square here, we're looking either down or up from the underworld, as above, so below, of a pyramid. Now, that pink one right there that I've got my pointer on, if you'll look at it, is a little more flat. And is actually the shape of the top of the pyramid that's there. Extremely close to it. Right? Looks like it. Well, it is somewhat, but you can see how this pyramid here that's below on the geometric shape of the hex is a taller pointed pyramid here. And this is the point and angle that we're using to go up. And if we did so, it would be a taller pointier pyramid and taller than the Great Pyramid itself. If they were to come up to a full declamation, which would end up being about the top of my pointer now. Which causes all kinds of problems whenever somebody figured out that if you even use moving scaffold to be able to do it, to be able to come up on the side of this would take something like 20,000 full-grown cedars of Lebanon, blah, 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 and it starts to take on the idea of Gilgamesh and Humbaba and the whole concept. But let's get back onto this here. So it might be easier if they ever built... A pyramid in the shape of a hex so you'd be able to easily understand what they're trying to talk about but because they're using 3d already at this point and putting them together and working together in concert it's hard to even pick it out until you get to the point where we're at now but this hex goes with a certain planet too this goes with Saturn. In fact, it has a hex on it. It has rings. And someone said whenever you take the Vesca Pisces and build it all in the geometry I talked about earlier, like a spirograph situation, and you reach that middle part of it, if you were to take the middle and then take and square the circle inside of it, that would be about the size of Saturn. And then the outside, if you were to square the circle of the whole body of the perimeter of the outside would be about the size of the outsides of Saturn's rings. Or what we think of the outside of Saturn's rings. Now we know that it actually goes out four times that far, but it's really just a misty dust there and not concentration of rings. By the way, we also figured out that Saturn's rings are slowly going away, but if you're hanging around 20 million years from now, it'll be a whole lot less and not so as dramatic as it is now. Makes you want to wonder how it used to look not too long ago but then it changes right here at this line and whenever it does so it's another geometric shape which works in concert with this shape which we'll talk about here in a minute and this is working off that same pyramid notice that square that square same thing same concept but in this one it's got a slightly different angle in it something that looks a little more familiar like the great pyramid and each one of those triangles that are in with that, perhaps you can see the yellow one a little bit better as being a concept of that. But if we put those all together, that also is a star. You can draw a point across, not the center, but from here up, well, 
from here to there from here not across the center but to there you draw them all in and what we end up having is a star trapped inside of a pentagon and it really looks a lot like the Chrysler symbol and when I was a kid all these things started showing up and I was realizing they're in everything in basically all the heavy metal music and stuff and journey album covers just everybody had pieces of it but it's also in architecture everywhere and once you started seeing it I couldn't quit it's kind of overwhelming at one point here so here we have something like Saturn and here we have something that's been associated with Venus now Venus is the symbol of the moon or, or a symbol of the planet that's there but also with women is associated for with the moon and there's other representations that talk about, you know, in the Great Pyramid, when they cut off the top of that, and the eye that's left in that side of that, that if you were to take and say, well, then the bottom part's the Earth, and if we were to cram the Earth the way it looks right now in the inside of that, i.e. draw it inside of that, that its top comes up to the point that that exactly does cut off the top and leaves that open. But then what is that top? Well, that top that even on a dollar bill shows as being off and separated in the eye is the exact size that what the moon is in correspondence to the size in relation to our Earth to the moon now would be in that picture and photograph fits right inside of that little eye there. And it hooks to a whole concept of eclipses and how that works even though they're the same size to our eyes but 400 times different but 400 times away 400 times larger and therefore looks that appearance to us so here we have something that looks like a pentagon and a hexagon in the modern day can you tell me uh, places that are built using this from way after this point here using a hexagon to build their shape or perhaps you could tell me something a structure that's been built that looks like a pentagon shape I bet you can but this is using that sacred geometry with nature and binding heaven to earth and the way everything's all built and the way everything works it's amazing whenever you look at something like this what we're looking at is molecules of so these amino acids and guanine cytosine thymine and adenine but when we look at those adenine is shown usually as a pentagon shaped which has to do with the star and Venus and so on and it's sacred God number nine and everything that goes along with that but the way that it covalently bonds and non covalent bonds and stuff to things you'll have a bond that hooks up like this to it and what does it hook up to well it hooks up to a hex perfectly because this side panel and this side panel work well it's a way to help work with chemistry and we were talking about alchemet before so here we go if you look they're all through this concept here and they're hooking those together and it almost looks like a web network across in fact if you've ever seen a soccer ball that's how they're all hooked together with hexes and pentagons and so on right making a ball or a sphere like the earth so we have that other concept here it is And this is the way that we draw chemistry to this day. The way things bond to each other, it makes sense for us to say, well, there's these attaching points. It's not just a circle, but there can be this many bonding points and this, 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 this. And of course, it works somewhat in a 3D model whenever you see them working with molecules and so on like that. But this guy wants to tell you that because these two things are hooked together, they're showing you that they know about DNA or it has to do with creation and stuff and then it's ironic that DNA has this signature in it because that's what we're looking over here at the right is adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine and that's what makes up our genetic codes so here we're looking at a secret code that they had going on and all of it entails and we see that hex and it goes with Saturn L this god was like Ptah also looked at as being somewhat Osiris, although that is hooked up with the star Sirius. But then through a conflagration with him and some sacred woman like Mary, known as Isis, 
who is a symbol of Venus, if you're following me, just like Inanna, just like Diana, which is D-O-Anna, which is Inanna again. We have a sacred marriage union between these two things, and that caused the birth of Horus. And they're in sacred union right here. One's above, one's below, but with that concept, we get that. Now, these angels are kind of strange. They show weird shapes, and I'll show you something here that kind of when I was a kid, what blew me away, and another layer of that. Well, this all goes with that, and that all goes with this, because if we look at, like, Dungeons and Dragons dice, right? And I, just, I, I, I want to come clean with you. It's been over 20 years since I've even played this, short of like a video game version, which is nowhere near the same concept. If we look at these, they're different ones. This is a 12-sided dice here, and you can see that angle where it is. And if you cut that thing off, that's about that flattened pyramid that we're looking at before. But you can also see that all of these shapes are basically made out of triangles. Now, triangles put together make that hex up of the pentagon, and that 12-sided is made of the pentagon. And isn't that 12 a sacred number that goes with everything? For the other version we're looking at, it's like this 8-sided dice, which is like a 4-sided dice, which is the pyramid. One on top, one on the bottom, like this right here, where there's a four-sided dice there, and you took super glue and put two together, as above, so below. Are you following me? Now there's even a 20-sided dice and so on here, and boy, that's a flat little pyramid, almost like a little mound, but again, these are all made up of triangles. If you look, you can see it in them. In fact, if we did one like this, it's like gold-rimmed and so on like that, you can really see how this is made out of a pentagon and so on. So now we can see that cleaved off shape and you can actually take something like that shape and get this representation out of it. In fact, that's a 3D representation in dice that we we're looking at. And that actually works with percentage chances. When you play this game, when you play this game, whenever you're asked to do certain percentage chances, due to the percentage chance and what you're looking at, you use different dice. Due to your attributes that you have all hooked up, you use a 20-sided dice trying to beat that. But for damage of certain weapons, do 4 damage like an arrow or a common one or a 6 damage for a sword and so on. You can get magical weapons and get pluses and everything onto it. D8 for a long sword, things like that. But you also have less attacks per round than this and it kind of evens itself out somewhat. But... When you have a six-sided dice, each chance that you have of each number that's on there is 16.66%. If you add that up, that ends up being 100. When you get the four-sided dice, it's pretty easy to realize that you got a 25% chance of that happening. When you get a ten-sided dice, you have a 10% chance of it happening. When you get a 20-sided dice, you have a 5 in 20 or 20% 20 chance of it happening or 5% chance 20 versus 10 10% chance doesn't that make sense here we go but you can see this double four eight let's see if I can show one that's got it standing out in its angle so you can really see it although that's not stood up like the way it is you can see this one as we keep doing it here right there how that looks real similar to that look that's up in here and if you have one up and then there's one poking down inside of that now you get that so again this is not a mistake this was done in a certain way and because it had already been done and covered they did the other pyramids in a different way and the one of the great pyramids that comes up directly after this in line end up showing you that they had another idea on it and everybody goes oh well so the red one they got it right and then da 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 well the red one's dimensions are a little different and it can encapsulates other things too 
So each of these are going along with stars and planets and so on because we're looking at Saturn and Venus hooked up together in conjunction, which we can look at as being the breeding of Horus, which is a rebirth concept idea. And so this God rebirths himself, and doesn't that sound like Jesus again? And here we go with this empty tomb. Boy, didn't somebody go through a whole lot of trouble just to make this empty tomb concept that someone would find. Well, really, it's not all about us in the modern day. It was all about them and showing that they could do this. And for all future generations, just shortly after, all the way till now, that this type of thing was capable, possible. We also look at other things like the fact that copper can even really chip away diorite and then we have a whole nother problem on our hands of how they built certain things during what's known as the Copper Age, don't we? So what's called a mistake is really not a mistake. It's actually a double-double good. No, they didn't make the mistake. If they had made the mistake, they could have peeled it down and made this thing a whole lot easier and made the work a whole lot easier on everybody, even though because... It, at least some of the stonework was already done and you if you took the hump points out of each one of the apexes there of it and utilized it to make the whole thing of size it would have been a whole lot easier if they're figuring out all this other stuff don't believe they couldn't have figured out real easy how to fix that and how to reline the stones back up to get it to be the exact degree that they wanted to be and the reason that they went from that to this and this is not the great pyramids exact shape or the red pyramids is not because they made another mistake but because the union that they're talking about here goes with these two objects which symbolically sacred go with the whole concept of rebirth that they're all about make a little more sense now if it does give me a like let me know if you have anything more to add to it i'm sure if i kept going i could really add to this but i've i've yammered on for 45 minutes here so the Great Pyramid and all of these show many sacred connections, geometry, and all of this knowledge that they knew. People talk about a lost civilization, and I'm telling you, it's right in front of you the whole time. We've been staring at the, at the forest, can't see the damn tree we're talking about, or that there even is one. We want to find a lost civilization, it's right in front of us. It doesn't even have to be Atlantis. Look at what we know now. Versus what you were taught if you only got through high school. Like, share, and subscribe, and enjoy, and we're going to get on to another one. Peace.